Hello there, StarCraft fans. I have got another cast for you, brought to you by StarCast TV. This time around, it's going to be a Terran versus Protoss, and it is my favorite Protoss, Snow, in the top left. Going up against my favorite Terran, it is Light. And what I like about both of these players is generally when I watch them play, they just play management style games. You don't see someone like Snow going absolutely ballistic like Mini, where he's just trying to out multitask you, trying to bust you with like mass shuttles. Generally what I see Snow do, just play solid openers like Goons into Reaver, get some harass off when he sees an opening, defends Vulture harassment very well, then transitions into the ultimate late game comp of carriers plus gateway units. And as far as light goes, you know, these days, he plays a similar type of style. I, I rarely see him do anything crazy. He also is content with just taking bases, just taking his side of the map in Terran vs. Protoss. He's so good at Terran vs. Protoss that he can even split the map and defend all his bases. It's quite impressive. You know, there's maybe one other player that comes to mind that can do that, and we all know who that is. That is Flash. So I'm very excited to see this game. And we do have, what was this, a 12 gas, I guess an 11 gas opener actually from light here. Meanwhile, I did notice that this simulator timing is a little bit late. So it looks like we're probably going to have multiple zealots coming out from, from snow, maybe two, maybe three. Meanwhile, we've just got the standard opener pretty much from light 11 gas. You know, it's it's not as common as 12 gas, of course, but not unusual, right? Now, meanwhile, we are going to probably have a scout interception in the bottom right. Unfortunately for Snow, this is going to be a last scout for him, and that means that I think the Marine will be able to push the probe back. Meanwhile, maybe Light will sniff out that this was an early scout, but I doubt it. He may still end up going for the end scout anyways, but we've got his factory coming down. It's very fast. What was it, like a 225 factory? That's what you can do when you've got an 11 gas opener. Now, I thought we may actually have some movement from the Marine, but smartly he keeps it back because there is a single zealot moving across the map, and I do expect to see probably even one more. Yep, there's the second one, and we do even have a third one queued up, so it's going to be three zealot pressure, this is going to be pretty tough to deal with generally if you're a lower caliber player. But this is light, man. He doesn't take damage to Zealots. We'll see what he can do here if he can work miracles with this SCB and Marine Control. Already almost killing that probe. Look at the SCBs body blocking so well versus the Zealot. And he must have had a read versus no. Because as I stated, it's not that 11 gas is super uncommon. But generally you do go for... 12 gas unless you think you're going to be pressured like this. So getting the Vulture out slightly faster is going to allow him to easily repel this attack. And these two Zealots are going to have to just turn around. And I got to say, I don't like the opener from Snow that much anymore. It looks like he cut his second Zealot after, or his third Zealot, after seeing how fast the Vulture was. I think that was a smart move. But we've got a mix-up. I was talking about how Snow generally just plays very normal, but this was a 330-ish Robo, one base Robo, followed up by a Nexus. Light's gonna get in here, I think, maybe with the Vulture and see like, dude, why the heck is your Nexus so late? But for now, this single goon does push it back, and he is just gonna move across the map and see if he can get any intel. Back in Light's main, we see that it is a standard tank follow-up. A lot of times you see Terran players go for mines to try and catch the goon out of position, but no mine upgrade just yet. Here's that vulture, and he should know that, dude, this is so late. Also, you didn't build a second Dragoon. You're holding position on the ramp with Zealots. Why? Alarm bells would be going off for me for DTs, but he must know something I don't because there's no eBay, there's no mine upgrade, and this is actually the correct read. This is a, a fantastic read from Light. I'm not sure how he knew that. I didn't see the SCV get in. Maybe it did actually sneak in and spot it, but I don't remember that happening. So for now, uh, this is kind of a dream opener for light. We've got a tank coming out, a bit of a misrally there. His 
Command Center is going to come up pretty much at the same time as the Nexus. And we've got the SCE transfer. Now back in his main, don't see an armory anywhere. I gotta say, fast armories are very meta these days. Something like 445 armory, 430. You really see really fast armories, but this time around, not going to be the case. And there is the mine upgrade, as I was expecting, but it's way later than I was expecting. We've got a 5 marine, 2 tank move out, with that vulture already complete, obviously, and rally vulture. With the mine upgrade, this will pack a serious punch. But the reaver should be coming out soon, and you can see that it's 80% done. So this single, single base robo opener is really going to help him here because of how fast he can get this Reaver out. Pylon's buying time. This is actually surprisingly annoying for Terran to deal with. You can't just A move anymore with your army. And uh, we all know how good Snow's defense is with the Reaver. So far, a Dragoon does die. He spots the Reaver. And he does lose both of his vultures, but I would say this was an okay trade for him. He forced out units. He, of course, forced out the very expensive Reaver. And he didn't lose any tanks. As a Terran player, you don't care about your Marines. In fact, they take up supply. So now, if anything, he doesn't have to build an additional depot. So I think this was overall a decent trade for both sides. We've got light up two workers. Not a big deal. We've got the armory done. No plus one started just yet. But I would like to see him start his additional factories right now because anybody that's ever watched snow play knows how deadly he can be with that unit right there single shuttle single reaver can rack up so many kills when he is piloting it so we do have the second factory coming down we've got the turrets in a good position a lot of players do go for the turret ring but i've seen more and more players build the turret near their mineral line why? I'm not exactly sure why they are opting for this over turret right here, for example. But what I do see them often do is what we're seeing right here is they lay mines on the outskirts while also laying mines in the main too. So I don't think it's really a big deal, but we do have... Okay, that's a mine right there hidden under the eBay. I thought it might have been a turret, so a cute mine placement right there. We may... It may actually bait Snow into unloading there, but... Nope, this time around, he's just willing to take a third base for himself. And this is kind of what I was expecting from Snow. Gets map control with the Reaver, just powers off of it. We're still on three gates. I expect to see the Citadel coming down pretty soon. Maybe even a Stargate since he's well known for carriers. But this time around, it is going to be the, the Citadel. And remember, he killed those Marines, so he knows there can't be much loaded up in the bunker. So he just runs straight through it. And... This could deal damage, but he's not willing to risk unloading. Okay, he's going to unload at the natural. It takes a little bit of mind splash damage there. But overall, okay, actually it's two kills. That was more than I thought he was going to get. In the main, how much damage can he get done? Not really a good place to unload, it doesn't seem like. He's going to unload in the very back. Didn't actually think that there was a spot to unload there, but uh, he does find a little bit of damage there. But this is just buying him time. His third Nexus is going to come up. The shuttle's not going to be taken down by that single Goliath or single Marine in the bunker. And back in Snow's main, with the Citadel being complete, this should signal that this is going to be an Arbiter type of game. Okay, I was getting a little worried because we're floating a, a bit of money here. And, you know, this is the, the best of the best. They don't float money often. But it looks like he was just focusing on his micro a little bit there. We do have the third factory done for light. This is more common than what you've seen in the past, which was two factories into four, into eight. A lot of Protoss players have been very aggressive with shuttles these days. You've got to have a lot of units to keep up. You can't just rely on like a floating racks to soak up hits. You can't rely on having good, just good tank and mine placement. Like you actually got to have a lot of stuff to kill shuttle man with gateway bus potentially. So, pretty common follow-up. I thought I saw the science facility. Yeah, science facility is done. So he's, oh, he has not started plus two weapon. Okay, there he goes, he starts it. And that means he's gonna have about a 13 minute plus two timing. That's pretty normal. And back in Snow's main, I'm still just waiting for the gateway flood to unfold, but instead he has opted to just tech up even harder. He's got his Stargate coming down. There's the Arbiter Tribunal. And look at this sort of SimCity. If he does 
feel like a drop is coming, like there is, he could just wall that off with some buildings. But I love his goon placement right here to intercept that drop. And that's going to keep Baron back a little bit longer. But good SCV count from Light. He's got really good econ. Like I said, because he has the three factories, you can see he's almost even in supply, in fact, so that's really good for him. And look at this. Snow just shadowing this dropship. He's like, dude, you're not gonna drop versus me. Like, oh, and look at this. He even backs off to make sure that the vultures can't get out. But of course, the caster curse comes in to end up getting out, but killing the dropship is still a good win. And of course, this won't do basically any damage. So good defense so far from Snow. I would say that, oh my gosh, that's a, that's a lot of gateways. That's what, 10 gateways? We do have the Vulture getting into the natural, but it's not going to get any damage. But what I was going to say was, I think Light got a little bit of a gift here. Because his drop didn't do any damage, his initial push out didn't do much damage. The Observer saw a relatively fast armory, and versus someone like Snow, who you know, when he feels like he has map control, is going to go carriers, I think... That this was a little bit lucky for light that it's actually going to be arbiters because arbiter tech really isn't going to get into the full swing of things until we're getting into the 13 14 minute mark where we've got multiple stasises coming in that's when Terran gets really worried whereas carriers you know they can be a real threat as soon as even just two pop out or even four is like not necessarily critical mass but a very dangerous amount now we've got drop coming in to the fourth base and this does catch snow a little bit off guard because you don't really build double drop that often but there's that sim city i was talking about limiting the amount of damage the drop can actually deal zealots trying to thin this off but with no cannon in the natural this shouldn't be able to do much more damage cannons at the fourth base or actually the third base should shut this down maybe no actually he gets an unload off he may get multiple probes here only one fall so far, but meanwhile, while the third base is being taken, or while that drop is being dealt with, I mean, the third base is being taken, and we're having an attempted denial with the Reaver and Goon, and there's a little bit of a misstep that you almost never see. Snow actually losing his Reaver, not a big deal because he's still got a lot of gates, and he's got his <laughs> critical Arbiter coming out. And just a moment ago, it was 140 supply, to 130 now it has shot up to 172 so that gateway count really kicking in in full force i did see light had six seven eight get eight factories coming in now i can already see the nightmare unfolding this wall here if he gets recalled in here how's he going to get units in there but it'll scrap all that we've got an engagement immediately as soon as arbor bust uh, comes out onto the scene he's in there man he knocks down a few tanks but i would say doesn't look like that was necessarily worth it didn't kill that many tanks. Terran didn't lose that much supply, and Snow lost about 40 supplies. That was a big loss. And Snow, he is going to start taking a fifth base pretty soon, but for now, he hasn't. Now, I'm curious what upgrades are. Remember, plus two, about around the 13 minute mark. There it is, it kicks in. But Protoss, what is he at? He is only at plus zero, and having at least plus one is such a big deal versus the Terran army when they do have plus one armor. Really, I'm looking for a plus two weapon. That's when Terran or Protoss actually starts dealing a lot of damage to the mech army versus 2-1. But to have just plus zero, I think if I remember correctly, the goons and the zealots both have to attack one additional time. And you never want to allow a tank to get an, an additional volley off, right? So that is a big loss for Snow. Hopefully you can fix that pretty soon. Big mine hits there. Zealots really took a lot of damage. And Terran lost, what, like two tanks for something like 10 Zealots or so? That is not the trade that Snow is looking for. Luckily, with the 11 gates, he's still not in that terrible of a shape. He's got his Reaver coming out again. This is something that I've been seeing more and more often these days, a mid-game Reaver. It's so hard to control, but so annoying to deal with. I see it more often on maps like Polypoid, where they just plop it on a fourth base ramp and just stall you forever, but it looks like he's gonna be going directly into the natural. Now remember, there's that mine that we knew about from earlier, but no mines at the top, and he is going to unload, and I, I probably Light is a little bit surprised to see that it's not a high Templar. And that Reaver, wow, is it really gonna bug and it kills nothing? That's just typical Protoss luck, right? Nothing dies, 
Vultures do intercept some probes here, so he's gonna get a couple here. Not the end of the world though, it's still 70 probes for, oh wow, there's a recall at the same time, I didn't even see it. So the Zealot Reaver drop actually just wanted to open it up. And that means that this recall got in, did a little bit of damage, but overall, not much at all. You can see Snow Supply plummets down to even versus light. This is an amazing position for him to be in, especially now that he's taking his fourth base and he's taking it top middle, expand, expanding towards Protoss. I think this is a good base to, t to take. He can push this base right here while defending his fourth at the same time. And also defending his fourth also defends his natural. So as long as he can lay some mines around this area to make sure that the third base never gets breached, I think Light is just in a fantastic position. How far along is his plus three? There's his plus two armor. Where's his second armory? It's gotta be somewhere. Maybe did he lose it? I highly doubt that. Uh, oh, there it is. So his plus three kicking in just soon and we're gonna see a maxed out 3-2 army, maybe with EMP coming in. Snow is in big time trouble. Also, he has a lot of probes. He has 15 more probes than Terran. So bigger straight up army value for Terran with obviously better upgrades. This is going to be so tough to deal with. So what can Snow really do in this situation? I think he's going to try and just stall with this Arbiter. Maybe recall on top of the army. Instead, he goes in without stasis. And this army from Protoss is just tiny, man. This is going to get eaten alive. For now, Light's army is stalling here while he saturates his fourth base. He's, he wants to make sure he gets everything set up before continuing his push. Sometimes I see a lot of players, you know, they try and be flash, they try and multitask everywhere, but Light's not like that. He's, he's very diligent, he makes sure that everything's set up properly before he over multitasks. And when you over multitask, sometimes, you know, you know, something's gotta give, whether it's you're not microing, you're not macroing, and that can really cost you the game. So I like how Light is just being very slow, very cautious, setting up mines here, denying this fifth base, and getting a, a little bit of more control over the right side. Like I said, I wanted to see more mines on the on the third base, so I think that's smart. Another Reaver drop into top middle. It's gonna shut down the miming. He, get, he gets a kill with the Zealot onto a tank, so that's worth, and shutting down the base is worth. This uh, Arbiter that never used his stasis now is starting to bank up a lot of energy. He can have potentially a recall pretty soon, maybe even a second stasis pretty soon. There's an, a very healthy Arbiter right there, so I'm sure a recall will bombard this position pretty soon. We've got the army grouping up right here, so you know it's coming in. There we go. There's no EMP. He doesn't notice at all, but he does have a good D matrix, and remember, he still has. A lot of units right here. We've got the vultures flooding in. But this ace, this is a lot of stuff. He's not going to lose that many SCVs. I think he's, okay, he's lost about five now. And that's, ooh, it looks like Light is kind of not able to make a decision on what he wants to do. Wants to do. He thought he was going to clean this up easier than he did. Now he's down 30 workers. So he's trying to counterattack at the same time. And like I was saying, if you start trying to do too many things at once, you can see half his army gets split up. He eats a storm, loses a decent amount of tanks for essentially free. This is a good, good scenario for Snow. Yes, I realize that this base is probably going to die, but he's still got four bases. He's still got big econ. He's still got these Arbiters alive. Now, where is... Okay, here we go. We're actually going to have a big engagement. Uh, it looks like there's not that many zealots, so I don't think that this army can win from Snow. Luckily for him, Light's half of Light's tank army in the back is not synced up. I was going to say, like, where's Light's army? But I realized he's the one at only 140, 150 supply. Now he realized that, hey, these tanks are way too far in the back. Meanwhile, we've still got... Okay, we've got four more gates at the bottom, so this is something like 15 or 16 gateways for Snow. I would really like to see Snow add an additional Stargate, really pump out those Arbiters, because I still haven't seen an EMP. There really seems to be no answer to the Arbiters just yet. Another Stasis goes down. Like I said, this base is probably going to fall, but he can transfer those probes easily to bottom right, so I don't think this is a big deal. We've still got another engagement coming in here. The tank count is relatively high. I think this is going to be hard to bust in. Vultures coming in clutch in the back line. He is going to whittle down the tanks down to... Actually, is that just six? Damn. 
really not allowing Light to get a critical mass of tanks. This is fantastic from Snow. He's now caught up to plus two weapon. That's not bad. This Arbor is going to get blasted. And there is the probe transfer, like I was saying. But you can see that really not many probes ended up dying. We've got the fifth base coming down. So I think this is still okay for Snow. Meanwhile, I'm trying to see, yeah, I was waiting to see, is Light taking a base somewhere else? It doesn't seem like it, but we've got another Arbiter coming in to top middle, and that's going to be probably a killed command center. That's so many goons there. He's going to actually eliminate this base, and Light is going to try and take mid right in just a second, but he is, his army split. Like, I think that this Protoss army could actually kill this right here. There we go. The Zealots and the Dragoons going to engage here. think Protoss can win there. Meanwhile, this army is going to escort the probes down to bottom left, so Snow's still going to be on four base mining pretty soon, and <laughs> Naokin, you're so dumb. Heron 3-2 versus just plus two weapon Protoss, they're not beating that. So this army actually ended up getting smacked, but he did lose the command center. So you can see Light is desperate. He's floating his command center to top middle. Now we finally have the patrolling vessel, so I guess he does finally have EMP to prevent that to prevent a future recall, I mean. Meanwhile, mid-right never actually went up. So Terran's still struggling to find a fourth base, but you can see a supply is still damn high. 175 to 150. This is still a manageable game for Light, but he's got to get his econ rolling because main's mined out, natural's mined out, third base getting close to mined out. So essentially, he's going to be on one base mining in maybe like two or three minutes. Not the position you want to be on. But we've got, again, Light just patrolling around the top middle. He's going to engage here. Again, th this army doesn't look that big from Light. What is it? Eight tanks, 12 vultures. Okay, we've got reinforcements coming in. Good Storms hit a lot of the vultures, actually. And I'm trying to take a look here. Is that an arbor? No, it is not. It is just an observer. So let's... Is there another arbor for recall anywhere? Okay, there we go. There's the banked up arbiters. Two of them. One of them has energy for recall. One of them does not. I'm just going to clear out some mines right now. One thing to point out, though, is there is a lot of probes not mining. So that will, you know, that is kind of a big deal. I, I realize it's still 60 or so probes mining for, for products. So there's still up workers. There's still up in bases. But, you know, seven probes, that's, that's like 50 minerals every eight seconds or something or so 50 minerals every eight seconds or so so that's that's not negligible that is a big deal well it looks like Terran has stabilized this top side of the map I don't really see an angle for Protoss to engage there anymore good transfer of those idle probes now would like to see Protoss actually start taking bases on the right side force Terran out of this camping camping position like if Protoss takes the bottom right and Terran just camps, well, those are bases Terran wants to take, and they're just not going to exist. So it forces Terran to actually do something about it. But for now, I don't see any probe movement over there. We actually got long distance mining. Uh, okay, I actually don't, I do not think it's bugged. Yeah, he is just, he just knows that he's oversaturated bottom left, so he's just going to long distance mining here. And we do have another, no, we don't, we do not have the engagement on the high ground there. I think that was a smart pullback. This Arbiter just barely out of energy for the stasis. But we do have a sneaky Arbiter at bottom right. And you know he's going to go for that recall as soon as he thinks that Terran isn't looking. Can the Vulture spot the, the Arbiter? And the answer is no. The Vultures just barely run by and miss it. Now meanwhile, it does seem like Light suspects that there's going to be a recall up here. So you can see, again, he repositions his army at top middle. But there's really nothing. Like, this base is just completely exposed. And that means if Protoss figured that out, he could just go for go for the throat, take out this base. Terran would be basically on one base mining. I don't think Light can recover from that. He would need to have, like, not just one or two favorable fights. I think he would have to have upwards of, like, three to five. And there goes that base. And that means that Terran, I would say is probably all in with this and you can see that he's realized that hey there's no chance of me being able to save that so we've got to go oh good storms in the center of the map templars were just waiting for their moment they all the goons and the templars are going to die but that softened up a lot of the tanks look at how many damaged tanks there are 
pretty nice, but this army is kind of stuck with these mines, but luckily there is an observer here, so he is going to be able to get through here, knock down these tanks, but we do have tanks on the move, and he's, they've got their eyes set on bottom left. Now, this could get wild, because we see Protoss counterattacking top middle. Remember, this is the only mining base from Terran. Terran is desperate, but at the same time, these are the only mining bases of Protoss. Terran very low in workers, very, very low. So his army is incredibly strong. This one Goliath, what a hero, soaking up so many hits. The Templars on the high ground need to great, oh, I was gonna say they need to get great storms, but they don't get any. There's a good storm on top of that tank, but he still reigns supreme there. That is a lot of tanks breaching this base. He knocks down the Templars. There's, okay, there is a sizable amount of units coming in here, but one tank. Oh, actually, there's a lot of tanks and vultures here for, for, for Terran. But the cloaking is really helping out Protoss quite a bit here. Vultures die before they can get really any damage done. But in the main, or in the bottom left main, this base is going to die. This is so scrappy, dude. This command center desperately needs to land. I think this base is gone. Maybe it's gone? There's only six goons here. If he can stasis the tanks right in this choke, just like that, that means that these tanks can't get in and defend it, and that could be a dead command center now. So really good stasis, but this bottom left base, it's gone. And look at the lack of workers now, 40 down to 14. That's basically the entire army differential right there. So this is so, so close. I would love to see him stagger another stasis, pick off these two tanks, and then just whittle down the Terran army. We can see finally Light has secured mid-right. Light is moving down to bottom middle. There's tanks defending, but nothing that can really stop them. There's the DT, you know, the panic DT that everybody knows and loves. Instantly, a recall at mid-right is going to shut down that base. So again, no mining for Light, but Snow's about to not be mining either. But as I say that, I noticed top left is actually up and running again. So it looks like... Snow, as, as, assuming he can take care of this army, because it is obviously still a strong army, assuming he can take care of this army, he should be able to tank this game, but the econ from both sides has just been ransacked. Now, I'm curious, how many Arbiters are there? That's the real question. There's, there's too many Arbiters. If there was like three or four vessels, you know, I'm a believer in potentially having the miracle EMPs hitting all the Arbiters, but with just one, I, I can't I can't see it happening. I, I just can't see it happening. What I can see though is I can see five, six stasis is coming down on this army out of sync, just being able to pick off straggler units here and there. There's the first one. He gets three tanks. He gets two tanks and two Goliaths. He's got how many more? There's another stasis coming. This is exactly what you should be doing. He, he, he basically split up the entire army. He's, got, he's even got more stasis, this man. Okay, and here he comes. So he gets rid of basically everything but five tanks. So this should be easy pickings for him. But Vulture's going to try and save the day. I don't see an Observer in here. So maybe there could be a miracle. Tanks still not out of stasis just yet. Tanks from the top side. Didn't even realize. Is, is Terran going to hold this? I can't. I can't believe Terran might hold this. Oh, they're coming out of stasis. Oh, Dragoons and Zealots on the top side. It looks like there's just going to be barely too much Protoss. If these units from the top side didn't actually come in, I think Terran would have held there. Terran down to sub 20 supply. What an insane game. 29 minutes. You've got both players at just 17 workers versus two absolutely crazy but it is going to be snow reigning supreme in this game well that was a wild game i think both sides played incredibly well i thought terran's army was gonna be just too strong with those heavy upgrades but the econ was a little bit too much to overcome. You can see the 20k difference, and really the Arbiters is what did the work. The recalls were fantastic, the stasises were on point, the storms were on point, and it is going to be Snow taking the game. So that's going to be it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this game, make sure to tune in to my next one, which should be coming up pretty soon. Take care.